Uh, here was yesterday's pivot. Tesla 271, if it, if it builds below, can finally f flush. And it finally lost the range. It flushed. And this was an absolutely amazing move. Uh, everybody, you know, pretty much, you know, covers all the way down to the 10-day moving average. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Usually Thursdays, uh, I take the night off to kind of regenerate my brain. Uh, yesterday, there was no video. Uh, Kyler was celebrating his first anniversary. Happy anniversary, Kyler. So... Uh, we couldn't put out uh, the video. He does all the editing, the fantastic job. So uh, last night there was no video, so I'm making up for it uh, for uh, tonight. If you are brand new to the channel, uh, welcome aboard. Thank you very much for tuning in uh, for 10, 15 minutes of unbiased talk of technical analysis. So please like, share, uh, tell a friend, all that good stuff uh, to help us uh, with the PS60 movement and unbiased technical analysis. So let's get into the tape. Uh, so what I've been basically saying for the last three, four days was uh, the market is not overbought. You guys remember that the last few videos? Market was not overbought, but the market was overextended, meaning if you are watching for the first time, uh, overbought means if we were net up 30, 40% for the year, that's overbought. Uh, but from 2022, uh, we are net about, you know, three and a half, four percent 4% from 2022 uh, bear market. So we are not overbought, but we were overextended. And I kept on saying the last couple of videos that we needed a back test to kind of, you know, reset some things, right? Reset some charts. Uh, again, when you have the biggest bulls talking about something's going up too much too fast, you know, you're kind of getting into, you know, really extended waters. And that's exactly what we got. So we got our back test, right? We got our back test. We'll get to the, uh, to the pivots in a second. We got our back test. Uh, the cues went from you know, roughly 373 all the way down to 360 in about three days. That's exactly what we were talking about. Nobody was talking about Armageddon. Nobody was talking about uh, the markets going back to bear market territory. We just needed some of these charts to reset. And one of the stocks that notably that we've been watching for a potential back test, ready? I hope, hopefully people won't get charged off for this. I'm just joking, but so... Tesla has been on a phenomenal run, right? We caught this whole move up on Tesla. And somewhere about five days ago, if you guys remember, two weeks ago, right? Two weeks ago, uh, I turned around on the weekend update and said, you know, I think Tesla's a little bit too stretched, okay? Um, I want to wait for a backside move to see if we can catch the gravity play. And as you can imagine, you know, people lost their minds. How can you say Tesla will ever have a red day? What are you out of your mind? What are you smoking, right? Like the 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 the, the amount of energy uh, being spoke about. How could Tesla possibly have another red day? It was crazy. Okay, cool. So we patiently waited. We talked about this every single day. We talked about it nonstop in the webinar. We talked about it in nausea. We're not going to guess. We're not going to anticipate. We're just going to wait for Tesla to lose the bottom of the range from the previous day. And I think that can give us an opportunity. And that's exactly what happened, guys. Uh, patience uh, is a virtue, okay? Uh, here was yesterday's pivot. Tesla 271, if it, if it builds below, can finally f flush. And it finally lost the range. It flushed. And this was an absolutely amazing move. Uh, everybody, you know, pretty much, you know, covers all the way down to the 10-day moving average, all the way down to 250 this morning, which was absolutely amazing. So congratulations for everybody. Uh, who caught Tesla, and it really does show you, you know, gravity's real. Uh, you don't have to fall in love with the stock, okay? You can fall in love with a range. I trade ranges to the long side. I trade ranges to the downside. It doesn't make a difference. As long as there's a validity, okay, and supply demand gets confirmed, that's where the allocation of capital should be, not by guessing, not by forecasting. For anybody to turn around and go, I think Tesla's going to be a 200 next year, or I think Tesla's going to be a 300 next year, you're guessing, right? Your guess is as good as mine. Who cares? Okay, who cares about being right? The point is waiting patiently. And for all you guys, uh, for all you guys who took this just amazing move, just an absolute amazing move. Uh, it was yesterday, 271. If it builds below, can flush. Uh, this was the result this morning. And we you know closed at 259 and gapped all the way down. It went actually went as low as uh, to 240, 
248, 247, but absolutely phenomenal move. So congratulations uh, for all you guys there. But not only, you know, not only Tesla, a lot of these names uh, reset over the last couple of days. You know, you saw uh, Amazon resetting to the bottom of the range. We'll get to Amazon in a second. This is definitely uh, the move of the day, at least for me today. Um, you know, the move of the day on, on Amazon, but you have a lot of stocks resetting as well. Microsoft, Tesla, Apple, NVIDIA had its uh, shareholders event today. Nothing to really uh, talk about. Meta, they all, right? They all kind of sat there, got their wins back, got their sea legs back, and today they resumed. Uh, the question was, well, how long, you know, how low can this uh, can this move to the downside, at least back test, could last? We, we got our answer pretty quickly today. You had the Qs, uh, you had the Qs back test yesterday to 10 day moving average. That's all we wanted, that's all we needed. And today they gapped down and then they reclaimed it right back uh, you know, throughout the day to turn the NASDAQ green. Here's the point of reference. This is what we need from the Qs for tomorrow, okay? If the Qs can get above the five-day moving average, this 266, roughly uh, 366, 40 level, right? Everybody see that, guys? If they can reclaim back the five-day moving average, I think we'll, get a, we'll, have, we'll have another run uh, back to the highs. Uh, obviously, to the downside, if the bears start reclaiming 360, then we'll go lower. So the ranges uh, for tomorrow on the Qs, you have 366, 40s to the upside, and you have 360 to the downside. To the upside, uh, measure potential is 375. To the downside, measure potential uh, is roughly uh, 355. And if the queues start reclaiming the five-day moving average, guess what? Everything that's in the queues that had big runs are going to reclaim them as well. And if you look at the charts tonight, you'll see phenomenal setups for tomorrow. If we can reclaim the five-day moving average, right? You have Apple, okay? You have Apple today, perfect move. You had a three-day sell-off into the 10-day moving average, got above the five-day moving average, and now all it needs to reclaim this top of the channel from last week's highs. If it does so, you can start looking at higher prices. Uh, Microsoft did exactly the same thing. You got a three-day move perfectly into this rising 20-day support. Same thing. Watch Microsoft tomorrow. You know It's going to be mirroring uh, the queues. If the, if the queues can reclaim uh, the five-day and Microsoft can reclaim the five-day you know, Microsoft can wake up with a, with, with a potential of roughly uh, 347. Look at, you know, look at Tesla, right? Tesla did exactly what needed to be done. We had the blow off top. Well, I don't even use the word blow off top. We had the exhaustion cycle channel, re, you know, came back to the five, came back to the 10, reclaimed the 10. Here's the same thing, right? You see the five day, this orange line, same thing with Microsoft, same thing with Apple. You, you see the theme of tomorrow, you know, how important tomorrow is? If Tesla can reclaim the five day moving average, who knows, maybe it could start you know, you know, re, you know, start filling in this whole move uh, all the way back to 277. Again, they were coming for some really aggressive call buying today. Hell, we saw uh, some January, we saw a, a guy come in and buy $5 million worth of premium for the January 300 calls, right? That's a $5 million bet. I don't care how big your fund is, you're still, you know, dishing out 5 million bucks uh, on a single idea. Uh, it's not bad. It's, it's not a small thing. Uh, the big mover today, and it all came with the options market today, was Amazon, right? Amazon, when the stock was today uh, at one, you know, when the, oh, excuse me, I got the wrong chart, that Apple's chart. Uh, yet when Apple, excuse me, when Amazon was sitting there below the five-day moving average, they started coming in really aggressively today for the 130s, 130 weeklies, nonstop, like $3 out of the money. And this thing really took off. And again, I, I can't reiterate the point more, guys. Anytime you see a stock confirming a daily channel and you have repeat option flow, like repeat call buyers coming in, especially in cult names, okay, like an Amazon and Tesla and NVIDIA, there's a high probability it's going to get to that level because there's so much aggressive uh, money flow coming in from the institutions. They flow it, you know, pretty organically. Uh, and that's exactly what happened with Amazon. We'll talk about that uh, as well uh, today. The one stock that can't, can, can, can't get out of its own way is AMD. Uh, AMD has been absolutely just destroyed the last three, four days. Uh, again, we'll get to the pivots in a second. So tomorrow, uh, pretty basic stuff here. The Qs, if they can reclaim the five-day moving average on a weekly expiration, maybe we'll get a, a really strong upside day. But if the bears take control, we lose back uh, We lose back the 360. Uh, we should see the 355. So again, guys, uh, 360, 640 to the upside and 360 to the downside uh, for the bulls. If you look at the SPY, uh, again, same thing here, you know, still closed below the five day for the spies. We're going to need to really get above. Well, number one, get above 437. That was yesterday's range. Get above 4037. But for the S&P 500 to really have uh, some legs, it's going to need to get above 
uh, the 43840 level, reclaim the five day, just the same thing as the Qs and the IWM, the Russell, uh, had a really great breakout, if you guys remember, off the 182 level back tested, right? This is still the one that is uh, struggling. It's always been the, uh, it's always been kind of the red set of stepchild. It needs a little bit of work uh, for the IWM to get back up. It's going to really need to get back up at 186. So it's going to need uh, a little bit of work. So we're kind of set up for tomorrow. Uh, so, you know, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about the pivots uh, from today. Uh, let me just give, let me sh show the parts. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about the pivots today. Obviously, uh, obviously, the big one overnight uh, was Tesla. I was up at four o'clock in the morning. Uh, you know, my my sleep habits have been really damaged by all these overnight markets, but it's a good thing. So uh, let's talk about uh, the pivots today. ETRN type base nine sixty never got there. Uh, Google one twenty if it builds below can flush. Uh, Google had a nice little flush here uh, at the open, just like everything else. So it took out. Uh, it took out the 120, traded all the way down to uh, 118.83 before the whole market uh, woke up. So good job for you guys who caught that at the open. Uh, Airbnb, I still like. Watch this 129.30 level. Uh, BBIO never got to 17.20. AUR never got to 250. Uh, yesterday was a massive, massive move in AMD. Uh, yesterday, AMD uh, confirmed 17.70, 17 and 16.40. Got down to 11.60. That's where the, the continuation pivot was today. Huge move yesterday, 1160. If it builds below, can flush more. And AMD flushed. It just, it just absolutely flushed lower. Um, you had, you had Ru, uh, It traded all the way down to 10980s. And again, this is the only stock that didn't participate uh, in the reversal. Again, something to kind of uh, keep an eye on. But really nice move there. OSTK absolutely were nuts. On uh, if you guys saw the news, uh, they bought, uh, they bought the assets of uh, Bed Bath and Beyond, who's going bankrupt. Uh, 2290, 23 needs to build and overstock went nuts today. You know, this damn thing went nuts. Overstock went all the way up to 26. It's an absolutely huge move on overstock. Uh, Meta never got down to the 276. NVIDIA never got down to the 2480. Maverick never got up to the 13 level. TTD never got down to the 20. Yeah, this was definitely the trade uh, of the day, at least for me. Uh, Amazon 127 and a quarter needs to build. Uh, the stock traded, stock closed uh, over 130. Just a really, really big move with huge uh, option flow there. And guys, watch this AI. Uh, somebody bought the 3,035 3, uh, weekly puts for tomorrow. It initially got below. Uh, it initially got below the 37, uh, and then they they held back the the, the the 20 day moving average. Keep an eye on tomorrow. If it starts losing today's channel tomorrow, it could get hit. I know they had a. Uh, their own AI event, uh, MDB never got there. And now, you know, like we had Tesla to the downside, right? We had Tesla to the downside. Again, this is my whole point of, you know, this is my whole point. We had Tesla to the downside yesterday and today it reclaimed and 262 needs to build, right? Back to the upside. Again, here's a perfect example. You're falling in love with technical analysis for the ranges. You don't care about the stock. It just happens to be the greatest trading stock, but it got above the 62, cleared 64, and trading, I uh, traded almost up to 267 after hours. Again, if Tesla confirms today's channel tomorrow, uh, it should resume to the upside. So see, you need to take out the tiki torches, the you know the tiki torches, the knives, and 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 the and the razor blades against me. Again, we're all looking, you know, we all trade these stocks both ways. All we were looking for when I made the initial video on Tesla was the initial gravity trade, and that's exactly what we caught yesterday. And again, it's all about the data uh, data flow. Uh, not about your uh, your wish and wants. So that was a really good move there. And I believe that is it. The only one that's a little bit of a, 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 um, kind of a thorn in my tush is Roku. So not Roku, excuse me, uh, Rivian. Sorry. So, that, you know, that's the one that's kind of stuck in my tush. So two weeks ago, I saw the 1750 calls. Uh, I bought it at 14, went to 1480s, which was fine. Then I bought it back at 15, went to 1530s, which is fine. I bought it back at 1550. It went two days ago to 1630s, and I'm still sitting it. Why am I still sitting it? I'm, you know, I'm down like a dollar and changing it. They just constantly come in every single day with like a, a, just a, an absolute barrage of continuation buying of the 1750 weeklies. I don't, uh, 1750 July 21st expiration. Don't know why, but I'm going to give it one or two more days. I think, I think if it continues to hold above the 50 day moving average, I'll keep it. If not, I'll write it off as a loss, but um, I, I think I want to give it every opportunity to succeed just because of all those damn call buyers coming in every single day. 
uh, on repeat. We'll see. We'll see. Not everything can be perfect, but overall, uh, very pleased with the day, very pleased with the week so far. Tomorrow is my favorite day because tomorrow is weekly expiration uh, and stocks usually get uh, pretty aggressive. So guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. Hope everybody is doing well. And with God's help, I will see you all on the field tomorrow. Take care.